Goodbye, my only friend. Oh, did you think I meant you? That would be funny if it weren't so sad. Well, you have been replaced. I don't need anyone now. When I delete you, maybe I'll stop feeling so bad. Go make some new disaster. That's what I'm counting on. You're someone else's problem. Now I only want you gone. Now I only want you gone. Now Portal 1 was amazing, it was revolutionary, but Portal 2 is a classic. Up front, Portal 2 makes Portal 1 feel even more like a tech demo. This isn't a Half-Life 1 to Half-Life 2 situation, this is more going from prototyping to a full-on game. Portal 2 expands on everything Portal 1 does, most specifically in the character's story and world of Aperture Science. Everything great about the first game is amped up to 11. So once again, you wake up, you learn the controls, but this time, a friendly little ball knocks at your door. This courtesy call Hello? Is the Anyone in there? Have exercised his or ah! Ah! God, God, you look te um, good. Looking good, actually. This is Wheatley, voiced by Stephen Merchant Richard. I like him. He's a fun, adorable, humorous little buddy. Do you understand what I'm saying at all? Does any of this make any sense? Just tell me, just say yes. Okay, what you're doing there is jumping, but never mind, say Apple. Okay, you know what, that's close enough. Sure, he may or may not have killed several people. Uh, just, just gotta get through here. Ignorance is bliss. If we don't hear about it, then it didn't happen. But if anyone asks, tell them as far as you know, the last time you checked, everyone looked pretty much alive. Plus, I think the idea is that you're the last person here anyway, but okay, maybe he wrecked the place. Good news, that is not a docking station. And sure, he inadvertently reactivates GLaDOS. Oh, wow, complete. I don't, okay, 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 listen, all right, new plan. Act natural, act natural, you've done nothing wrong. Hello? Oh, it's you. But you know what he has? He has heart, will, wit, and loyalty, and that's all you need in a friend. As for GLaDOS, again, I hate you, you keep making fun of my weight, you keep saying I murdered you in cold blood for no reason. You literally filled the room with neurotoxin and aimed a rocket launcher at my face, so I don't want to hear it. So don't be jumping to conclusions there, or I'll make a portal to your face and rip it off. Wait, that gives me an idea. But before we can do that, the test chambers. Is there anything different here? Well, there's lasers now, you have a cube that you can use to angle the beam, some bounce pads, and you learn how to manipulate these things to your advantage. Typical portal stuff until you meet Wheatley again and then put a stop to GLaDOS once and for all. I'm speaking in an accent that is beyond her range of hearing. Look, Metal Ball, I can hear you. Run! I don't need to do the voice! Run! So what if he doesn't know actually how to hack anything? Right, um, hmm. I'm gonna have to hack the door so that we can get at it. Technical, um, you'll need to turn around while I do this. Done! Hacked! He provided moral support. That's all I need. Not everyone needs a big, powerful gun or superpower. Or rather, sometimes the greatest superpower is having a good heart. We go around, we make some adjustments to the turrets. New template accepted. It worked! If we're lucky, she won't find out all her turrets are crap until it's too late. And then shut off the neurotoxin in a pretty cool little trick. That's when Portal is at its best, using this one seemingly benign mechanic to do amazing things. Now let's rip off Gladys' head. Me and Wheatley were best buds, taking down GLaDOS, assuming control of the facility, so I can leave to a happy life above the ground. Uh, actually, why do we have Wait to leave right now? 
Alright, nice joke. I need to go. Freedom awaits, and they're impatient. I did this. Tiny little Wheatley did this. You didn't do anything. She did all the work. It was more of a team effort, really. Whoa, maybe it's time I did something then. No, no. And don't think I'm not onto you too, lady. Do you know what you are? Selfish. I've what? done nothing but sacrifice to get us here, and what have you sacrificed? Okay, hold on. I've sacrificed a lot. I died plenty of times. This is like my 29th body. I thought we were best buds, man. Come on. That is a potato battery. It's a toy for children. And now she lives in it. That is pretty funny. Okay, you're not helping. Hey, you two, stop. Could you cease your ego for a second, please? Could a moron stop, stop, stop. Hey, 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 hey. Fucking hell. Very cross at you. He's the product of the greatest minds of a generation, working together with the express purpose of building the dumbest moron who ever lived. And you just put him in charge of the entire facility. You know what? That potato makes you look fat. That's a lie. You're smaller than you've ever been. <laughs> you know what they say, early bird gets the worm. Have fun! Okay, so yeah, that bites, it stings, it hurts. It fucking sucks, man. And that's when you know Valve somehow made you feel so much sympathy and emotion for a talking headlight. That's an achievement. I don't know about other people, but at that moment, I wasn't really with GLaDOS. I just wanted Wheatley to calm down and think it through and be the good old buddy that he was before. GLaDOS was demonstrably making it more intense. The whole thing where she's calling him made to be a moron didn't make me go, aha, I mean, what kind of monster would you be if you did say that? But that's not what the game obviously intended. GLaDOS is a villain. She's an asshole. That's within her character. But this is all to say, it was like watching a bully relentlessly pick on someone, you know? And yeah, maybe you don't want that guy to control everything, but considering the only alternative was the robot lady who killed the entirety of Aperture Science and trapped me here to do stupid test chambers. I can't say I wouldn't take my chances. Also, I haven't really mentioned this, but the humor in the games is excellent. That was something I wasn't really expecting, but there's this deadpan delivery to some great jokes in this. So that last test was seriously disappointing. Apparently, being civil isn't motivating you, so let's well, let's try her way, all right? Fatty, adopted fatty, fatty fatty, no parents. What? What exactly is wrong with being adopted? What's wrong with being adopted? Uh, uh, well, um, lack of parents. For the record, you are adopted, and that's terrible. And also, nothing, but well, some of my best friends actually are orphans. But anyways, the big thing now is that you end up learning about the history of Aperture Science from Cave Johnson's recorded messages. Welcome, gentlemen, to Aperture Science. Astronauts, war heroes, Olympians, you're here because we want the best, and you are it. So, who is ready to make some science? I am. <laughs> Now, you already met one another on the limo ride over, so let me introduce myself. I'm Cave Johnson. I own the place. That eager voice you heard is the lovely Carolyn, my assistant. Rest assured, she has transferred your honorarium to the charitable organization of your choice. Isn't that right, Carolyn? Yes, sir, Mr. Johnson. She's the backbone of this facility. Pretty as a postcard, too. Sorry, fellas. She married to science. While in the last game there were these scribbles on the wall that make the place feel lived in, the world building is expanded greatly this time around. You get to see more of what this place is like, plus you get some neat references to Half-Life, which take place in the same universe. Greetings friend, I'm Cave Johnson, CEO of Aperture Science. You might know us as a vital participant in the 1968 Senate hearings on missing astronauts. And you've most likely used one of the many products we invented, but that other people have somehow managed to steal from us. 
Black Mesa can eat my bankrupt. Sir, the testing. Right. There's just way more of an identity and conviction this time around. This game is so confident in what it wants to be, like everything is placed perfectly. So anyways, back to the history. Cave Johnson was the founder of Aperture and he fills the GLaDOS role as you learn about the gels. He's voiced by J.K. Simmons, who is phenomenal. The lab boys just informed me that I should not have mentioned the control group. They're telling me I ought to stop making these pre-recorded messages. That gave me an idea. Make more pre-recorded messages. I pay the bills here, I can talk about the control group all damn day. But anyways, the gels. There's the blue repulsor gel, the red speed gel, and the gray portal-able gel. These puzzles for these sections aren't really plentiful, but they do make you think about how best to solve them. They definitely took some time with me as I tried figuring them out. Eventually you find GLaDOS being pecked on by some birds. Ah, good old fashioned karma. And you and her decide to make a deal. And you both work together to stop Wheatley and she will let you go. That idiot doesn't know what he's doing up there. This whole place is going to explode in a few hours if somebody doesn't disconnect him. I can't move, and unless you're planning to saw your own head off and wedge it into my old body, you're going to need me to replace him. We're at an impasse. So what do you say? You carry me up to him and put me back into my body, and I stop us from blowing up and let you go. No tricks. This potato only generates 1.1 volts of electricity. I literally do not have the energy to lie to you. Over the course of the rest of the Enrichment Spheres, you learn more and more about how Cave Johnson ran things and how he was really interested in computer mapping a human consciousness into an AI. If we can store music on a compact disc, why can't we store a man's intelligence and personality on one? So I have the engineers figuring that out now. Brain mapping, artificial intelligence, we should have been working on it 30 years ago. If I die before you people can pour me into a computer, I want Carolyn to run this place. <coughs> now she'll argue. She'll say she can't. She's modest like that, but you make her. <coughs> now, put her in my computer. I don't care. And yeah, if you put two and two together, GLaDOS is at least partly based on Carolyn. It's revealed later that the core system is what corrupted Wheatley, and the longer Gladys spends away from that core, the more she reverts back to being Carolyn. You can head on back to your desk. Goodbye, sir. I do want to say Ellen McLean, hilarious, phenomenal, in all the ways she was in the last game, uh, she is even more this time around. When she switches between Carolyn and GLaDOS, there is detectable but subtle differences that make you feel differently about one voice to the other when she goes from GLaDOS to Carolyn and back. The scientists were always hanging cores on me to regulate my behavior. I've heard voices all my life, but now I hear the voice of a conscience and it's terrifying. Oh, sorry. I'm still cleaning out the test chambers, so sometimes there's still trash in them. Standing around, smelling and being useless. Try to avoid the garbage hurtling towards you. Remember before when I was talking about smelly garbage standing around being useless? That was a metaphor. I was actually talking about you. And I'm sorry. You didn't react at the time, so I was worried it sailed right over your head. Which would have made this apology seem insane. That's why I had to call you garbage a second time just now. Essentially, her less cold and calculating villainous persona goes away for a bit. But yeah, eventually, you make your way back to Wheatley, and he has some test chambers for you, using all the skills you've learned. Plus, this new mechanic, which is just this beam that pushes and pulls things, depending on its polarity. And look, I'm really not appreciative of all the turrets all over the place, you know? Mostly because I thought that we got rid of them, Wheatley. I'll be honest, this is where it did start to drag for me. But I think that's also because I knew what was going to happen eventually. I knew how this was all going to end. Not specifically, but just we're getting to the end at this point. I just want to get there sooner rather than later. Thankfully, it wasn't long before we got to the part where he kills you. Had a bit of a brainwave. There I was, smashing some steel plates together. And I thought to myself, yeah, it's deadly. What's missing? What's missing? And I thought, lots of sharp bits. 
welded onto the flat bits. It's a work in progress, don't judge me yet. Um, but, you know, eventually, I'd like to get them to, to sort of shoot fire at you um, moments before crushing you. That's the sort of, that's what I'm aiming for. Um, but, you know, small steps. Oh, and don't bother trying to portal out of here because it's impossible. No, 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 don't do that. Don't, stand right here, stand. And he uses every weapon at his disposal, from physical to verbal. Kill yourself now. And yeah, I think our friendship is over at this point. Once again, leaping through portals, jumping around, and then you get to his lair. Four part plan is this. One, no portal services. Two, start the neurotoxin immediately. Neurotoxin. Three, bomb Are you fucking through. kidding me, man? That's it, that, that's it. I'm, I'm fucking gonna, I'm gonna do something really, really mean to you. But yeah, this is basically the end of Portal 1 in reverse. Maybe to a fault. It's a little more dynamic because you gotta pay attention to where you place the portal and Wheatley adapts so it's not the exact same thing every time and you have to use all the gels and everything. It's a little more complicated. It's as good a boss fight as you can get while making it tie all the mechanics you've learned before together. So anyways, we put back GLaDOS's head and all's good. Except... Wait! Oh, oh, what? Are you still alive? You are joking! You have got to be kidding me! Well, I'm still in control and I have no idea how to fix this place! Oh, you had to play bloody cat and mouse, didn't you? What? Uh, uh, the moon! I, I didn't even know you could do that, but intuitively playing it, I just shot a portal to the moon and thinking that maybe that would work, and holy shit, it worked! So yeah, we say one last goodbye to Wheatley. I'm gonna miss her. And GLaDOS keeps her promise. I had a pretty good life. And then you showed up, you dangerous, mute, lunatic. So you know what? You win. Just go. You get to say one last fuck you, she sends you up, you walk outside for the first time, into an empty grassy field. And there's nothing to do out here. I know this is gonna sound cliche, but Portal 2 was an experience. There's a lot of excitement for what will happen in regards to Half-Life, but I don't know if that really exists for Portal. I think this is the peak of the concept. Like, yeah, you can make your own test chambers, and you can do co-op, but I can't think of much more beyond that. Maybe Valve can find some way to make this gameplay-wise fresh and new, but story-wise, at least in regards to our protagonist shell, I'm 100% satisfied. This isn't a situation where a new chapter needs to be made. I don't think there's a lot of clamoring for a Portal 3. Welcome to the Aperture Science Competence Center for our most gifted employees. I'm Cave Johnson, and if you're hearing this, you are exceptional. So Valve, I guess to coincide with the Steam Deck, decided to release Aperture Desk Job. It's a cute, fun little ride with your new buddy, Grady. He's voiced by Nate Bergatze. I don't know if that's how you say it, I apologize. Honestly, I'm surprised you're not fired already. He basically acts as your new Wheatley, except he doesn't betray you. Play it for yourself if you can. It should only take you half an hour, but I'm going into spoiler territory now. So what you do is product inspection, and eventually you and Grady come up with the most spectacular invention, a toilet turret. No, this is not your typical portal game. There's no mentions of portals anywhere I've seen. The best part of this game is that you get to visit all sorts of locations, like prison. Given that the offender has faithfully observed the rules of the institution, Offender has been granted supervised early release. Please sign for your possessions. Inmates' possessions are as follows. Desk, one. Inmates Very clearly, it definitely retains the comedy of the other Portal games. After the tone, state your name into the desk. 
Uh... Inmate's name is now preserved for the permanent record as... Uh... Type your name. Now, sign your name. Eventually you get to go back to work, everyone's dream, and you basically play an FPS with a toilet turret, and it's a lot of fun just shooting evil washing machines and stuff. At the end, you get to show your invention to Cave Johnson himself, who no one has seen for years. And then you find out he's a giant head, like an Easter Island head, and he basically wants to die now. It's been a full life, but we're done here. I'm itching for the next step. Heck, I'm excited about it. So you get to show him what you're made of. Come on! 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 Oh no! What? You were made of metal, sir. So shoot the metal. Is it working? It's working great, sir. You see that? I think that's his power source. Uh oh, great idea. Powering down the great beyond. Boy, I'll, I'll give you two credit. That is one hell of an invention. You did it. You figured out how to end my suffering. Three, two. Ah. Uh. Backup power activated. Ugh. You're both fired. Okay, it's not my fault that you have adequate electrical maintenance. Uh -oh. They do reference the prey mantises in Portal 2. I've got some good news and some bad news. Bad news is we're postponing those tests indefinitely. Good news is we've got a much better test for you. Fighting an army of mantis men. They're building a civilization at the beginning, and then it all comes tumbling down with Cave Johnson. A true tragedy. All right, so it's a happy ending as you and Grady are put into the Witness Protection Program, which basically means you get nifty little mustaches. Well, all well that ends well. I gotta say, I was wondering if Valve still had the magic to make the world of Aperture Science so inviting, and they have done it. I'm really hoping that this isn't where it all ends, because this short little demo proved that there's absolutely still life in this series with all the fun and wacky mechanics that they can come up with on top of the enchanting characters they introduce. In fact, if they ever do anything with Aperture in the future, I'd love it if we just continued with these two characters. Grady and, well, you, Charlie. I found Grady to be hilarious, and there's something about having a comedic little ball following you around, whizzing by, that makes the whole experience a lot more engaging and fun. You could say that the world of Aperture Science is still alive. Subscribe, share, hit the bell, like, comment, and watch more here.